Hi, I'm Gazimov, and if you're wondering how Star Wars The Old Republic is going to run your machine, then I've got this quick video to show you. Now, first of all, if you haven't already, stick this on 720p or high def settings so you can see the detail. Now, this is currently running on a high-end machine with all the graphic settings switched to high, all the detail on. Uh, this is on a high-end gaming rig, which is a Core i5 with an NVIDIA GTX 480 and 8GB of RAM. And as you can see, we've got fantastic draw distances, we've got ground clutter, we've got all that kind of detail that you'd want to have. We've got dynamic shadows, we've got the works. It looks stunning, it looks beautiful. No problems at all. Again, you can see the ground cutter pop up there. Nice, rich, sharp textures. Uh, what I'm going to do now is flip everything over to low res, low quality, as if you were playing on a low end machine. So, I'll give you an example this is something like an Intel Core 2 Duo with something like an NVIDIA 9600. You can see just from the taxi that the texture quality has dropped an awful lot, that the ground doesn't look as detailed. From a distance, it doesn't look too bad. You can also see now that draw distance coming right up. You can't see very far down into the canyon, and you can't see very far into the distance at all. It's a huge issue. If you're going to be playing this game on a low-end system, it's really going to handicap you. You probably want to look at upgrading. I'm now going to flip over to a slightly different uh, location. I'm going to go to Coruscant. I'm going to show you what the city worlds look like. Again, this is high-end. You can see that the statue looks nice and uh, detailed. You've got uh, good quality lighting there. The lights around the various buildings and stuff seem to give off a bit of a glow. And everything looks nice and rich and detailed. You've got a little bit of bump mapping there on the various plates and so on. And we'll go over to the uh, taxi cab. We're going to take a flight through the city. The great thing about this game is that it does cater for various different machines. So if you're wondering, is it worth getting or should I upgrade first? You can always get it and see how it runs. But if you're kind of on the edge and you haven't upgraded your machine in three, four years, then it's something you really want to think about. Again, you can see on this uh, version, You've got high detail textures, so the taxi cab looks nice and detailed. You've got detail in the various different bits of architecture, the doodads that pop out, so things like the aerials, the air ducts and so on. All of that's there. You've also got the vehicles moving in a kind of traffic lane. And that nice glow and a bit of fog as well. So a lot of ambient lighting. Now let's take this, and flip it around, do exactly the same thing on low detail textures. You can see that the statue doesn't look nearly as detailed. And if we flip around and look at some of the side buildings, you can see that the lighting there doesn't look nearly as sharp anymore. Buildings themselves don't look nearly as nice. And even the people that we see and look at as we pass don't look as detailed. The really interesting difference with this is once we start on the taxi, you'll notice there's a bit of an issue. First of all, the taxi cab textures have dropped. But as soon as we start flying around, you'll see that bits of the city are missing. We've pulled the architecture draw distance in so tightly that the world seems to pop up in front of us. And this texture pop is a real issue. If you're looking to try and get immersed into a game, you're really going to struggle with this on low quality settings. The great thing is that because the architecture is at a fair distance, it doesn't look too bad. But it's when you get up close that you really start to notice the difference. Anyhow, that's enough for the city world. The third location I want to show you is Alderaan. Now, this is the PvP planet. 
It's one of the nicest locations you'll find, and there's a huge flight path available as part of the location. Now this one you can see that there's a bit of grass there for ground clutter. Now that even on high quality graphics you'll see that you're still getting a bit of uh, tree pop. You'll even be able to notice in the far distance the ground, the mountains appear. Now obviously because this is beta some of the flight paths still need to be sorted out. Some of them currently go through trees and you'll see it go through a mountain a bit later on. But in the main you can see that you've got nicely bumped map textures, particularly on the snow where you can see footprints and so on. And the whole thing looks particularly pleasing and bright. It's likely that they'll be doing a further pass on the graphics engine before the final release, so you can expect to see things like that tree draw distance being pushed right out on the high quality graphics settings. One of the other things that you notice is that, as well as having a tree draw distance, there's a even shorter draw distance for mobs and player characters. While that's not too much of an issue while you're in combat, it means that as you fly through the world, you tend to have a very small radius where you'll see other creatures and other players, which can kind of make the world feel a bit quiet and lonely. You also notice that the water has a little bit of a texture as well. As I said, this is a very long flight path. It really kind of shows off the world. I remember I told you about some of the flight paths going through mountains? Well, that's the one. It's likely that all of these little issues will be picked up before the game actually gets released. One of the things you can do while you're here is you can really see the draw distance in that um, in the distance there, particularly that crane that you've got in the scaffolding in, in the far distance. You can also see the skybox, so you see the clouds and the far mountains and so on. That's all a nice, crisp, sharp texture at the moment. The issues with the skybox will become apparent a bit later on once I flip this over to low quality graphics settings. Alderaan's pretty good for being able to show off the various different bits of scenery and architecture. It's quite nice to just sit back and take it all in. You can see again the ripples on the water there. And here you can see that far texture pop if you look at the mountains in the background there. Well right, flipping it over to low quality graphics again, you'll be able to see something pretty quick. First of all, no ground clutter again. But secondly, the draw distance and the tree line distance, so the distance you'd normally get doodads, rocks, boulders, stuff like that has all been pulled in to roughly the same level so that everything tends to pop up at the same time. This is why I think they'll be doing another graphics engine pass a bit later on to push out that draw distance for trees and so on because otherwise it tends to look a little bit unnatural. But the whole problem we've got now is that it basically looks like you're flying around on essentially a dinner plate of texture and world. It makes the whole place feel very small. I mean you have a bridge there with for a moment nothing to connect it on the other side and they haven't fogged out any of the far distance either so it's just effectively staring into space that said the textures themselves for the blocks and snow and what have you still don't look too bad and you still got things like bump mapping there as well it's just the people the mobs the taxi again that tend to look a bit bland and boring Again, you can see as we fly along here, you can really see that skybox in the distance, but there's nothing in between us and it. There's no mountain range there, there's just effectively a painting on a wall in the far distance. 
You can also really notice the repeating texture pattern for the ground on the low quality graphics settings. And as you can probably see, our water doesn't have any depth to it at all, it's just a pasted texture. Now, even though we've gone for low quality graphics, we still have to fly through the mountain. But as you can see, there's pretty much nothing to see in the distance. On the ground, things look uh, fairly plain as well, particularly when you've got metal plating and what have you. But previously where we could see the crane and the architecture and stuff like that, we can't see it this time around. Again, low quality graphics aren't that bad when you're in a canyon or you're in a room or something like that. But when you're out and you're trying to enjoy the scenery and you really want to take the world in, it's fairly limiting. And again, you can see this time that our circle of mobs and other players and creatures and what have you tends to be at the same distance as well. So at least you know that whatever's in your field of vision is pretty much it. Anyhow, there's, that's pretty much it from what I wanted to show you. Remember, if you can't see any differences, try whacking this up to the 720p or high def setting on YouTube to see all the detail. The one last thing I'd like to point out is that not all flight points are done with speeders. As you can see here, you do get the odd animal there as well. A little bit of variety for you. Anyway, I've been Gazimov. If you'd like to find out more about Star Wars The Old Republic, then have a look at the blog, manaobscura.com. And there's also a weekly podcast as well. You can find that at obscurecast.com. Anyway, I hope that's been useful to you. Uh, any questions? Drop me a line in the comments. Goodbye.